Tracy Moore, and we're going to pick her brain about the casting process and um, also learn a couple of tips about uh, the spirited actor. Um, so I actually got a question from one of the celeb locale viewers, and it is, uh -huh. what is the best way to send in or submit when you are not represented? Well, I always suggest to actors that they sort of carve out the business side of show business, and so... I believe that once, it depends on your schedule, but once or twice a week you should do mailings. I think that, um, I think they're powerful. I can list actors who have gotten contract roles on, on soap operas or roles in film and television based on sending in their picture and resume. Now, of course, the process is much different now with the internet and emailing mm -hmm. and things like that. However, the best way is for actors to get the Ross Report. Um, or have some sort of access to every agent in New York and every agent in Los Angeles. Um, I think actors should have a clever cover letter, something mm -hmm. fun that's going to capture my attention, especially if I'm reading, you know, my name is such and such. I'm currently, you know, you're not just an actor, but you're a creative being. Right. And I think that you need to, I think actors need to tap into that as well. And so, um, I mean, an example, I remember when an actor sent me a letter one time and she had a colored Band-Aid attached to it. And she was like, I know by now with you opening up pictures and resumes, you should have a paper cut. And I actually had a paper cut at the time. It was just crazy. But that caught my attention and even more so um, made me put her picture on the wall and like, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm going to keep her in mind because, you know, it was a clever letter and she sent me a Band-Aid. So as far as follow-up, what's the best way to follow up? Is it the phone call? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, so follow up how? Um, well, if you have the email address, then I mm -hmm. would follow up with an email. If not, I would send a composite if you mm -hmm. had a smaller version of your picture mm -hmm. or um, in a cover letter with your, you know, some actors have business cards with their picture resume. I would send a letter off, you know, to... The casting director and say, "Hey, you know, I'm current. I just currently booked a PSA, or I'm currently right. in this play. Um, I'm kind of old school in a sense that, um, you know, I'm I'm a writer and literally a pen and paper. I like that, <laughs> and um, I'm a mailer. So, you know, so but now it's different. You know, everything is email and texting. So, um, yeah. if that's the way to follow up, then you know, I follow up in that way." So as far as the, like, with the Band-Aid thing, I know some people say that they hate gimmicks. Mm -hmm. Are, has there been some type of submissions that just turned you off, that it went too far? Like, have you had anything like that? Mm, when I was New on New York Undercover, I used to get uh -huh. a lot of gifts. I and it didn't turn me off. It just, <laughs> it was challenging, you uh -huh. know what I mean? Because it's not like, just because you got me, you know, a gift certificate to Bliss, Mm -hmm. You know, um, nice yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> really lovely gifts, because that show was, you know, the show yeah. at the time. Um, I think that, you know, if I had a pet peeve, like, you know, I do this because I love doing it, and I love actors. All of my friends are actors, like literally all of my friends are actors. So I champion actors, I support actors. I think that things that would offend me or, you know, cause me some sort of um, uneasiness is you know, actors feeling that they have to use those things in order to talk to me or to get my attention. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pretty approachable. I feel like, you know, um, I'll help actors out whenever I can, mm -hmm. however I can. So you don't really need to do the song and dance with me. Just be mm -hmm. honest and, you know, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. How you know? do you feel about paid auditions? Pay really? Play, yeah. Pay to play the... Auditions? The, yeah. For casting directors. Really? How do you Where have I been? Um, oh. <laughs> um, wow. There are a couple of places. Right. Um, I, I think maybe maybe the correct turn is pay to play. Okay. Um, this is a question from someone, but uh -huh. how do you feel how do you feel about it? People well, paying to meet casting directors, people paying to meet agents. Um, 
But mainly as a casting director, how do you feel about those? Wow. Um, Tracy, you didn't know people did that? I feel really weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I know that I've done Actors Connection. Mm -hmm. Used to do it when I was at New York Undercover. And so I know that what I used to do was go to monologue classes or scene study classes. They gave me a payment, mm -hmm. um, the, the organization. Um, and then I would spend two hours, you know, um, giving constructive criticism to mm -hmm. actors and really giving them, you know, some pointers. Um, but I know my motive behind that was I was crazy casting. So I was like, oh my God, this is an opportunity to meet new faces and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I guess, how I feel. Um, there's no guarantees in this business. So if an agent or a casting director is asking you for a payment and then saying, I can guarantee you a role, I have an issue with that because that's not the power we have. There's a big misconception. I think that the, the, a casting director is a liaison between the talent and the director and we bring you guys together. There are too many elements involved for me to say, I make the decision. Casting directors don't make a decision. If you're dealing with films, you're dealing with studio. If you're dealing with television, you're dealing with networks. If you're dealing with commercials, you're dealing with agencies, uh, a whole bunch of people. So the point is, is that I need to know and feel secure what's the intent of this payment, you know? Right. Um, and then I think that if, it, if it's furthering my career in terms of, you know, um, meeting this casting director to have this informal audition and they're going to keep me in the forefront of their brain or, you know, they're going to give me some great constructive criticism or tips, then I'm not really mad about that. Okay. But again, you know, you have a lot of people out here cleverly disguised. And especially when you go into these markets that don't, that are not New York and Los Angeles. I know a market right now, 10 grand they charge people and they take these horrific headshots and they absolutely have no solid foundation of training, but they're all ready to work and think they're the best actors in the world. And my question is always, well, if you were all that, you would be working. And I always tell actors, there's no place in Hollywood or New York that you go to and you're knighted and it's like, boom, you've made it. Mm -hmm. You make it when you decide you've made it. That's when you make it. And it has nothing to do with money or a role or material things. It's about having the courage to, because you need courage to pursue this journey. Yes, you do. And a lot of it. Yeah, you need courage and, you, you know, you need to have this undeniable focus that you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. This is the journey, but you're going to get right there. And you need all this stuff on the journey to help you get there. So if you don't lose focus that you're going to get there, then you're good. But if you start to sort of like doubt your talents and listen to it's all constructive criticism, it's all opinions. Mm -hmm. But the only opinion that matters is the opinion that you have of yourself. I get a lot of actors when their souls need like a, you know, you need to shine them up and, you know, blow some sprinkle dust on them. And, and I'm personally and emotionally connected to actors. And Ready for those flashing lights.